That's it quite a few times. It, it has. I think the, the important point here today, and this is a good day for Europe, as I think it is a good day for the U.S. and for the world economy, that our leaders came to a set of measures and initiatives that will be far-reaching. Uh, Ishwak Prasad, uh, take us into some of the details. Now, we said some, many of the details are not well known. Uh, the question of the rescue fund, for example, what jumps out at you? What do you like and what do you, what do you still wonder about? First of all, I think this is a very promising step in the sense that Europe is facing up to some harsh realities in a concerted way. And the sounds all sound very good because it is, in a sense, a very comprehensive measure dealing with the banks, dealing with Greece, dealing with long-term governance problems. But the details are really the problem. So if one thinks about bank recapitalization, there was a sense that banks may need somewhere between 100 billion euros and 300 billion euros. Why? Because a lot of the capital that they hold is in the form of debt of these economies that are in trouble. So once there's those are marked down to market value, the banks need more capital. There is a sense that 100 billion euros may have been very much at the low end of the amount that banks need. Then there is what is called the European Financial Stability Facility, which is supposed to be the rescue, the rescue fund. Rescue and fund. Now, the critical thing to note is that there is no money added to the rescue fund. But what has been decided is that the um, EFSF money uh, can be used in a way to leverage up whatever money it has. And the hope is that the EFSF money could be used to basically guarantee the first round of losses that private investors may take if they were to buy new debt. So if an investor, um, say an official government or a private investor were to buy new Italian debt and then there was a default on that debt, then a certain proportion of that, maybe 20-25%, would be covered by the FSF. Now, is this going to be enough to draw investors in, either private or sovereign? That's the big question. Well, let me ask the ambassador, because I mean, what is notable here is governments are not committing, as Ishwar said, to put more money in. So, so in, in reality, can a bailout fund be there and be enough? if something happens. I think it can. And the reaction of the markets, and I've been talking to some investors throughout the day and people representing the market forces, they, they seem to be, uh, they seem to consider this as a very promising and a very important uh, package. But let, let me say something. In times of difficulty, and we all are in difficult times, financially, economically, even socially, one needs to be creative. And I think what this uh, set of measures revealed is also a search for creative mechanisms to maximize the firepower that we have at our and that's what we've done around, around the, the, the facility, the European facility. We are, you know, leveraging by four or five times uh, with the money that we have put there before. So we need to be creative. We need to involve the private sector. And many people in, in the United States talk about the role of banks. I think our leaders uh, were seeking a valid, legitimate and balanced contribution of the banking sector to this uh, particular problem. And the proposals on the table aim at that. Speaking of banks, another part of this, as we said, is the, uh, the so-called haircut uh, to, uh, uh, regarding Greece. Now, now, is that, how would that work? I mean, that's a, it's called a voluntary haircut. What does that mean and how does that really work? Now, there are two aspects to whether it will work. The first question is whether this is going to work for Greece. Now, the presumption is that, in fact, if private bondholders 